is a noun and what are the different types of nouns? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hi there, thank you for checking out my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. If this is the first video you're watching from my channel, I make educational and motivational content. So if you don't want to miss any of my new uploads, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell icon. Now, this video right here is part of our series sa parts of speech. Isa -isa natin yan ngayon. Again, we, we are talking about nouns right now, but if you want a quick overview, the part one of series na ito is right here. You can watch that video and then come back na lang dito. Kasi ngayon, deep dive tayo into nouns, all right? But before we do that, just a quick little plug. If you want to help support this channel or cause to democratize education in the Philippines, one way that you can do that is by being a channel member. If you want to know more about that, you can click on the video right here's i button or sa description box sa baba, or you can just click yung join beside the subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube, all right? Yung mga channel members natin, rookies and MVPs, they help us fund itong operation na to so we can have money to pay, pay the bills, upgrade the equipment, and also pay for yung mga scholars natin and our interns. So maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. And now that we have that out of the way, I'm going to switch over to my tablet. I'll see you in a bit. Alright, so today we're going to talk about the types of nouns. Quick review lang din. Ang noun ay yung kumaga sa Filipino tangalan. These are names or words for people, places, things, feelings. And um, iba-iba yung mga klase niya. Now, what we're going to cover today or attempt to cover would be itong sampu na ito. May mga resources online na ang listahan nila ay 9 types of nouns. Merong 8, merong 11. Pero itong 10 na ito kasi yung madalas kong naririnig, madalas din ginagamit, and madalas na confuse Kaya itong 10 na ito ang pag-uusapan natin today. Okay? Now, if you want a quick refresher on what is a noun, a verb, an adverb, adjective, etc., we do have a video on the different parts of speech. Ililink ko na lang din siya sa i button sa taas if you're watching on YouTube para mapanood nyo yun. Uh, today, again, we're going to focus on nouns. Now, I did uh, make itong parang makeshift natin na, na checklist or card para makita natin kung ano-ano yung mga uh, nag-fit dun sa isang salita. Huwag kayong maglalak sa explain naman natin siya isa-isa. But basically, there are five questions that would help you determine if the noun mentioned is common or proper, concrete or abstract, singular or plural or collective, countable or noun countable, or if it's a compound noun o hindi. Okay? Now, let's start with the first pair. Ang question natin is, is it specific? Okay? Now, ano ibig ng specific or specificity? Pag sinabing specific, Ibig sabihin, hindi siya general. Okay, anong ibig sabihin nun? If we're talking about something na specific, this is the best way to explain it, I'll just give you more details. It's specific if it's proper. Okay, it's a proper noun, specific siya, it normally starts with a capital letter. So, ibig sabihin, if we're talking about a person, so kapag sinabi natin, boys, that is general. Kasi maraming pwedeng mag-fit dun sa pangalan na boys. Pero if we say a name, like Roger, perhaps, no? So, si Roger, with a capital R, siya ay specific na, na noun. Specific na pangalan ng isang tao. Okay? So, how do we spot proper nouns? We spot them by looking at, una yung first letter, uh, ano siya, telltale sign siya. Kapag capital yung letter sa simula ng pangalan, it's probably a proper noun. Okay? Now, we will have samples later, pero tinan muna natin yung second part. Paano kung no? If it's not specific. Now, kung ang tanong natin ay, is it specific? At ang sagot natin ay, no, it's not specific. It's so, general siya. Ito yung tinatag natin, common noun. Okay? So, again, these are people, places, things, or ideas, pero in general terms. Like we said kanina, boys. Okay? Maraming klase ng, maraming possible na mag-fit dun sa criteria na boys. It's not a specific boy or a specific person. Sign din, again, normally spelled ang common nouns with a small letter. Okay, small letter siya. Uh, hindi katulad ng proper noun that starts with a capital letter. Now, now that you know itong pagkakaiba nitong dalawang ito, the next task would be to spot sa sentence na ito kung alin ang proper noun at common noun. Okay? So, nakita nyo na ba? 
again ha, with the nouns being names for people, places, things, or ideas, alin dyan ang proper noun at common noun. Now, as you can see, yung Jeffrey na name, di ba? kahit naman wala yan sa beginning ng sentence, nakakapitalize pa rin yan. Kasi Jeffrey is the name of a person. So if Jeffrey owns this bag, yung Jeffrey na yan is a proper noun. Okay, Jeffrey owns this bag. Jeffrey is a proper noun. It's a specific person. Now, ano naman yung common noun sa sentence na ito? As you can see, may nakalagay dyan na bag. Ang bag is also a thing, right? And ang noun kasama dyan yung things. So yung bag, it is a noun, pero dahil hindi siya specific bag, no? it's a general thing. So ibig sabihin nun, bag is a common noun. So, it's different from yung ating proper noun. Kasi as you can see rin, small letter siya. Bag lang. Okay? So, yun yung unang kumaga, category natin to find out kung anong klaseng noun siya. Next natin na category would be if it's physical. So, sa question na, is it physical? Ibig sabihin ng is it physical, nakikita ko ba siya? Nakahawakan ko ba siya? Can I experience it with my senses? If the answer is yes, then it is a concrete noun. Okay, na ano ibig sabihin ng concrete noun? Again, these are nouns that can be perceived by our senses. Pwede siyang hawakan, pwede siyang makita. They can be felt, smelled, or tasted, or a combination of those. Okay? Ibig sabihin are common nouns like cups, di ba? a window, a bed, di ba? a watch. These are concrete nouns kasi nandyan sila. Nasa physical realm siya. Now, kung hindi siya physical, ibig sabihin uh, maaaring idea siya or feeling, that is an abstract noun. So again, abstract nouns are concepts and feelings that cannot be touched physically. Hindi ah, cannot eh. So mean, hindi mo siya pwedeng hawakan. So we have words like maybe love or joy, peace. Yan, yan yung mga words na hindi mo yun mahahawakan with your hands. no? Hindi siya tangible. These are feelings. Uh, then it is an abstract Noun. Okay, now, dito sa sentence natin to, sabi, the clock tells time. And kung hahanapin mo yung mga noun dyan, ang unang noun dyan is the word clock. Now, the word clock, dahil yung clock is something that you can see, but you can even hear it kapag tumutunog siya. So, nasa realidad siya, physical siya in nature, it's a concrete noun. Okay? Now, iba siya doon sa time. Ang time kasi, di ba, although meron tayong idea of time, hindi mo siya mahahawakan. Now, if you can be a little bit poetic or creative, you can say na, ah, you can feel time. Pero that is not literal. Hindi mo siya talaga literal na feel. It's just that lumilipas siya. Okay? Or it feels slow or if it feels fast sa panahon na yon. But time itself, hindi mo siya pwedeng hulihin. Di ba? Hindi mo siya pwedeng uh, hawakan. Hindi mo siya pwedeng um, i-capture. No? So, ibig sabihin nun, ang time is an abstract noun. Okay? So, it cannot be touched physically. Yun yung concrete at saka yung abstract. Now, the third category is about the number. So, how many are there? Gaano karami yung pinag-uusapan natin? Kapag one siya, it's singular. Okay? So, kung pinag-uusapan natin, a boy, a ball, right? Clue natin yung a na word, no? It's singular, ibig sabihin, isa lang siya. It's one noun. Now, kung ang tanong naman ay how many are there, at ang sagot mo ay, it's more than one or greater than one. Ibig sabihin, dalawa o higit pa, okay, if it's two or more, then it's plural. Okay? Plural noun siya. It refers to more than one noun. Now, as you can see right here, meron pa tayong space sa gilid. Kasi kung tinanong natin na how many are there, tapos ang sagot natin is, it's a group. No? So, ibig sabihin, marami siyang miyembro, pero nasa loob siya ng isang group. So, they're kind of counted as one. Anong tawag doon? Now, ang tawag doon ay collective noun. So, again, it's a group often used for groups of animals or even groups of people. So, we have words like team, uh, words like herd for sheep, words like pack for carnivorous animals naman, di ba? Yun yung natin collective noun. So, it's pertaining to a group. Now, ano natin mas spot ito? We have a sample sentence right here. Sabi, J brought biscuits for the team. So, alin ang alin dyan? Okay, now yung una, medyo, medyo giveaway siya, si J, no? 
And uh, again, quick shout out lang dun sa mga names that we're using sa episode na ito. Those names are um, the members sa ating channel membership program here on YouTube. So hi sa inyo, Jay. Salamat sa inyong mga support uh, para sa channel na ito. And sana natuwa kayo sa ating uh, surprise for this episode. Yan. So si Jay, isa lang siya. Yan ay singular noun. Now, ano naman yung plural dyan? Kadalasan nyo rin makikita, kadalasan to ha, kadalasan nyo makikita ang mga nouns na plural kasi meron siyang S. So yung word na biscuits, di ba? With an S, hindi lang siya biscuit as in isang piraso, biscuits, so marami. Baka maraming klase din. That is plural noun. Okay? Plural noun yung biscuits. Marami. Okay? Kung biscuit lang yan, singular yon pero dahil biscuits sila, plural siya. Now, ano naman ang collective noun dito? So, meron ba dyang grupo? Now, the word there would be team, right? Kasi a team is a group of people. So, that is now our collective noun. So, again, sa isang sentence, you have three nouns, iba-iba sila ng type. Okay? You have J, singular, biscuits, plural, and team, collective noun naman siya. Now, isisingit ko lang din dito na pagdating sa subject-verb agreement, very important na alam natin kung singular o plural ba yung noun na pinag-uusapan. And importante din na alam natin kung siya ay collective noun kasi iba yung rules doon. If you haven't seen yung lesson natin sa collective nouns before or group nouns before, ililink ko na lang din sa i button so you can watch it. Paano yung team? Singular ba siya o plural ba siya? Kailan siya nagbabago? Meron bang a team is and the team are? Okay, pag-usapan natin yun doon sa video na yun. Okay, nasa description box din siya sa baba if you're watching on YouTube. Now, dito tayo sa next point natin. Ang question natin is, can you count them? Kaya mo ba silang bilangin? Bakit? Kasi if your answer is yes, then ibig sabihin nun, it's a countable noun. Kung sabi natin countable, you're able to count the number. So, pwede siyang singular, pwede siyang plural. For example, bottle and bottles. Ang bottle is singular, ang bottles is plural. Kapag higit sa isa yung iyong bote. Na kung ang sagot mo naman ay no, babagsak sa category or sa sa kind or type na uncountable. Pag sinabi nating uncountable, you're not able to count kung ilan sila. Now, masaspot mo ito kadalasan, they're also called as mass nouns dun sa mga bagay na maliliit masyado, kagaya ng sand or kagaya ng uh, mga particles, no? Uh, katulad ng sand, uh, soil, yan, mga un- uncountable noun natin. Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na three sand or four soil or five air or 10 water, right? So these are uncountable nouns. Now, another thing that you could look at would be the fact na hindi siya kadalasan, okay, usually ito ha, so ibig sabihin may mga exceptions dyan, pero usually it cannot be in plural form. Hindi ka magdadagdag ng S. So ibig sabihin, if you're saying na I'm breathing in air, hindi mo sasabihin I'm breathing in airs. Kahit na kung tutuusin, syempre maraming mga, <laughs> maraming mga molecules ng, ng oxygen yung ini-inhale mo, sabihin natin. So, hindi siya lahat nilalagyan ng S para maging plural. Meron pagkakaiba yan sa paggamit. And isa sa mga pinakamalaking pagkakaiba niya ay yung sinasama nating words sa kanila. Doon sa ating descriptor ng number. For example, ang few okay, and many ay ginagamit natin sa countable noun. At ang little and much ay ginagamit natin sa uncount- uncountable nouns. If hindi nyo pa napapanood yung video na yon where I talked about that, kung kailan ginagamit ang alin, ililink ko na lang din sa i button so you can catch up. Yan ay topic na marami ang nagkakamali, even on a daily basis. So go ahead and check that out na lang after this video. Okay? Now, dito sa sample sentence natin, alin ang alin dyan? Now, yung ball right here, di ba? Ang ball kasi pwede mong bilangin eh. So nakikita mo talaga isang pirasong bola ito. So if I can count this, it's a countable noun. Yung sand naman, di ba? Ang sand, masyadong pino, masyadong maliliit. Hindi natin binibilang yan ng paisa-isa. That is an uncountable noun. So, ball is countable. Sand is uncountable. Now, yung last natin na, na category is the question na, is it made up of more than one word? Bakit? Kasi may mga nouns na yung noun na yun mismo ay pwede mong hatiin sa dalawang salita. Now, whether siya ay magkakabit, naka-hyphenate, or may space in between, pero binibilang na isa, ang tawag natin dyan kapag ikaw ay nag-yes, kasi it's more than, made up of more than one word, ito ay compound noun. 
Now, ibig sabi, anong ibig sabihin ng compound noun? Compound noun siya kapag two or more words na pinagsama, yun ang form ng noun na yun. Compound noun din siya, pwede siyang common or proper. Ibig sabihin kapag mga pangalan ng lugar, katulad ng uh, natin, national bookstore, for example. And again, this is not a paid video, no? Pero yun, meron ka ng national, meron ka bang book, meron ka pang store. So, uh, yung national bookstore, kahit siya ay proper noun, it's still a compound noun kasi it's made up of more than one word. Okay? At least yan ang galing sa aking research. Yan din ang turo ng teachers ko. Okay? Now, we have itong sentence na ito. Now, hanapin natin alin ang compound noun dyan. Actually, uh, medyo obvious yung isa, which is goldfish. Bakit? Kasi may word na gold, tapos may word din na fish. So, totoo lang parehong noun yan eh. Noun plus noun. Noun yung gold, noun din yung fish. So, yung goldfish is a compound noun. Now, there is one more compound noun dyan na baka hindi pansinin ng iba kasi hindi sila magkadikit. We have the word water tank. Yung water tank is also a compound noun kasi binubuo siya ng water at tank. At ang bilang dyan ay isang bagay. Right? Yung goldfish, yung isda na yun, ay nasa loob ng water tank or tangke ng tubig. Diba? Hindi naman siya water separately tapos tank. The entire tank itself is called a water tank. So, ibig sabihin nun, ang water tank ay compound noun. Okay, now, hinati ko tong mga klase ng nouns uh, into categories para hopefully matulungan ko kayo na maka-form ng association sa kanila. Kadalasan kasi pag hinuturo ito, listahan lang. So, ito yung singular, ito yung plural, ito yung compound, ito yung uncountable. Ginawa ko siyang ganito para hopefully mas matandaan natin kung ano yung pagkakaiba ng bawat isa. Now, para matest natin yan, let's take this word. Greenhouses. Okay? Now, yung greenhouses, check natin doon sa lahat ng mga kinds na tinignan natin ng noun kung alin siya sa mga yon. Now, yung first natin na Paris ay about specificity. Is it a specific na noun? Now, kung ang sagot natin dyan ay hindi, di ba? Kasi hindi naman siya capital letter. Tapos yung greenhouses, it could be any greenhouse out there. So, hindi siya talaga uh, proper noun. Ang sagot natin dito is that it's a common noun. So, check tayo sa common dyan. Now, here's the thing. Hindi ibig sabihin na common noun na siya, eh, hindi ka na mag-check dun sa ibang mga boxes natin. Kasi dun pa lang dun sa second thing, which is, is it physical? Titingnan natin sa sarili natin. Yung greenhouses ba? Physical ba siya? Is it, is it uh, something that you can touch? Something that you can sense? O hindi? Now, we talk about greenhouses, di ba may bahay naman talaga? Greenhouses are, di ba yung structures na, gin, na ginagawa to nurse plants? No? So, ibig sabihin, it really exists, it's there, it's tangible, you can feel it. It is concrete. So, ibig sabihin nun, ang greenhouses is a common noun, tapos concrete noun din siya. Now, next, how many are there? Now, dito na natin iisipin, isa lang ba siya? Marami ba siya? O grupo ba siya? Now, yung greenhouses, plural siya ng greenhouse. So, ibig sabihin nun, higit siya sa isa kasi... Check natin dyan. So again, now it's common, concrete, and plural. Next, can you count them? Kaya mo bang bilangin yung greenhouses? Oo naman, syempre, di ba? Ang lalaki nga nun eh. So we can check dito sa countable. So ang greenhouses is a countable noun. At yung last naman, is it made up of more than one word? Kung makikita ninyo, meron tayong word na green at saka word na houses. So dahil dalawang salita siya na pinagsama to form something else, Check din tayo dito sa compound noun. So, ang greenhouses, common, concrete, plural, countable, and compound noun. Okay? Now, again, hopefully, dahil meron tayo nitong table na to on structure na ito, mas madali nyo matatandaan kung ano ibig sabihin ng bawat salita na ito, kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng bawat kind na ito, at masaspot nyo siya. And of course, para hindi nyo makalimutan agad, meron tayong quick quiz. So all you have to do would be to check yung mga boxes for the words that ibibigay ko sa inyo para sa quiz na ito. And if you're ready with your pen and paper, your timer starts now.
All right, let's see how you did. So you have three words. Unahin natin yung word na family. Is it common or proper? Uh, as you can see, telltale sign again, malit yung letter. So this is a common noun. Is it physical? Okay. Yung family ba, nandyan ba talaga siya, nag-exist ba siya? Uh, kung yung fam familial feeling, baka pwede natin sabihin na hindi, no? Or family environment, hindi masyado. Pero, ang totoong family, as in your family, nandyan naman sila. So we can put it under con concrete. Pwede mo silang hawakan, pwede mo silang uh, ma-feel yung hands nila, pwede mo silang even maamoy, no? <laughs> uh, meron nga sinasabi na may, meron daw distinct na smell about family. Now, next, how many are there? Now, tingnan natin maigi yung word, ha? Yung family, um, isang pamilya ito, no? Pero, it's actually made up of people. So, grupo siya ng mga tao. So, we could say na it's a collective noun. Kasi a family has many members. Okay? Now, can you count them? Pwede ka bang mabibilang ba yung family? Yes, right? So, how many families are there? Di ba pa nagsusurvey tayo? Kadalasan tinatanong din yan. Now, yung next question, is it made up of more than one word? Hindi. So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya compound noun. So, ang family is common, concrete, collective, and countable. Okay? Now, next. Now, as you can see, nakakapitalize yung Z at saka yung cafe. So, ibig sabihin nun, it's a proper noun. Hindi lang siya basta cafe, it's the specific cafe na yan. Z cafe. Now, is it physical? Now, ang cafe, di ba? Nakikita siya, it's a brick and mortar store, so it's concrete. Hindi siya abstract or idea lamang. Next, how many are there? So, uh, hindi naman siya nag-make na attempt na gawing plural ito. No? So, ibig sabihin, it's singular. It's one cafe. Can you count them? Can you count yung cafe? Of course. So, it becomes countable. Hindi naman siya like sand, water, or air. And is it made up of more than one word? Now, again, when it comes to proper nouns, you can say that it's still made up of two nouns or two words. So, puta tayo sa compound noun. Yes. Okay? So, in Z Cafe now is a proper noun, a concrete noun, a singular noun, a countable noun, and dahil two words yan, a compound noun. All right? Now, hopefully, itong table na ito, uh, helps you sort things out again and remember things better. If you didn't uh, score perfect dito sa ating quiz na ito, that's okay. I'll be posting more questions on my Instagram account. So if you don't follow me yet, you can follow me at Like Amarabilia on Instagram for the new quick quiz questions na pinupost natin sa Instagram stories. And if you want yung mga throwback quick quiz questions din natin, iba pang updates sa mga talks, sa mga webinars at iba ba, you can follow at Team Like Arian on Instagram. If you have TikTok, you can also follow me on TikTok at uh, Team Laika for the educational videos, math and uh, English videos, at marami pang iba. And at Laika Maravilla naman for the more personal stuff, motivational videos, tips, and advice. And as a little plug rin, ihahabol ko lang na we are part of the Edu Creator uh, competition din sa TikTok. So if you want to vote for me, ililagay ko rin yung link sa description box sa baba. Uh, you can go to TikTok, hanapin nyo lang yung uh, yung page na where you can vote and you can vote for me or for the team actually so kasama kayo doon for all of us uh, three times in a day and I would love to to get your your feedback then and ayun, just uh, maybe support support uh, what we do here and on TikTok alright so thank you and and uh, see you online Alright, I hope you learned something today. If you did, click thumbs up. Make sure that you share this video with your friends. Sana ako mag-exam din sila. Lahat yung sarami tayong matutulungan. And as always, if you want to reach out to me directly, get the reviewers that I may join the online or live review events, you can go to www.facebook.com slash teamlaika for more information. Subscribe na if you haven't yet. Hit that bell icon. We have more videos to talk about. Kaya mamimiss nyo yun pag hindi nyo siya napanood. So sayang naman. And you can turn on notifications for all para ma-notify kayo kapag ready na yung susunod natin yung video. Alright? Now, next. Now, we're going to go to the video natin, as we always say. In this channel, na to, never stop learning. And don't be afraid to be called. Trying hard. I'll see you next time. Aja, aja. Kaya niyan. Bye for now.